Welcome to a quick demonstration on SAP Information Lifecycle Management. Today we will show you how to define retention rules, specifically focusing on a purchase order. First, we need to take a step back and explain that there are two sets of rules. The first rule is the residence period. This determines how long documents need to remain online before archiving. We will show you where to find this. The second rule is the retention period. This specifies how long documents are retained in the archive before they can be destroyed. We will show you how to configure this. These rules are typically set to meet business, legal and or tax requirements. To find and check the first set of rules, the residence period, we go here. You will notice two residence periods. The first flags the purchase order if it hasn't been changed for at least 30 days and fulfills the deletion criteria. Changes taken into account include a change in the order quantity and a goods receipt, for example. The second checks if the first flag was set more than 30 days ago. If yes, then it will consider the purchase order eligible for archiving. We now want to configure the second set of rules, the retention period. For this we go here. As we want to define how long purchase orders are to be stored in the archive, we select retention rules as the policy category. For object category, we select SAP Business Suite. For audit area, you will notice several options. The option you select depends on the type of data. For example, for master data you would select BOOP underscore DP, for employee data, HCM underscore DP, and for functional objects, like purchase orders, general. For ILM object, select MM underscore EKKO. MM underscore EKKO is specifically for purchase orders. It is one of hundreds of ILM objects delivered by SAP. Each one contains all the settings relevant to the data it will be used to manage. You can select continue to display or edit an existing policy. As we want to create a new retention policy, we will select new. You are now presented with filters, which you can use to set different retention periods. For this demo, we will create a simple policy. We first need to name it and save it. Changes are added to a transport request, so they do not need to be repeated across systems, Now, you click here to define the filters. You can select two retention periods. The minimum period sets when data can be archived. And the maximum period sets when data should be destroyed from the archive. Set the required retention period unit, in this example, year. The time reference refers to an event in the document's history for which the start of retention is crucial. For example, the creation date of a document, or the last change of a document. For purchase orders, we select end of year. The time offset is the start date of the period to be calculated. This ensures that the minimum period of data that will be archived is always the retention period plus the current year. As we are configuring an archiving rule, we also need to tell it where it needs to store the archived data, so we select the relevant location. You then need to save the policy. And, as a last step, 
change the policy status. You have now successfully created an ILM retention policy. We hope that this brief demonstration to SAP Information Lifecycle Management has been useful and interesting. Thank you for your time.